Hello Year 2s and welcome to this week's history lesson with me Mrs Bard. It's going to be our learning continuing on the Great Fire of London but before we start that new learning let's have a think about what we already know. We all love a quiz so let's start with a quiz. All you need is a piece of paper and a pencil to jot down your answers. Here we go. Question 1. When did the Great Fire of London start? Question two, where did the Great Fire of London start? Number three, who wrote a diary to help us to understand the events of the Great Fire of London? Number four, which London landmark was destroyed during the Great Fire of London? And question five, when was the Great Fire of London extinguished? When was it stopped? Pause the video here if you want some more time to jot down your answers and come back and we'll go through them together. Right, so how did you get on? Question one was, when did the Great Fire of London start? That was the 2nd of September, 1666. Now the second question was, where did the Great Fire of London start? And I'm sure you've got down Tom Fowler's Bakery in Pudding Lane. Number three, who wrote a diary to help us to understand the event of the Great Fire of London? And that was Samuel Pepys, a diary you've looked at a lot in English, so I'm sure you know that really, really well by now. Number four, which London landmark was destroyed during the Great Fire of London? And that was St Paul's Cathedral. And the last one, when was the Great Fire of London extinguished? It was extinguished on Thursday the 6th of September during the afternoon. Well done everyone, great start to the lesson. Let's find out what our new learning is this week. So today in history, we're going to learn to use sources of information to find out about an event in the past. Now you may have heard sources of information before. These can be primary sources or secondary sources. Primary sources are maybe pictures or documents that have actually been taken or written at the time of an event in the past. And secondary sources are sources of information such as books that have been written later on, like this one, The Great Fire of London, that you can read and gain information from. Now you're gonna be history detective today and you are going to act like a real historian. You're going to look at some sources of information and you're going to use them to gain clues to answer a question. And our question we're going to answer is, why did the Great Fire of London spread so quickly? Why did the Great Fire of London spread so quickly? So I'm going to show you some source of information during the lesson, and you're going to look at them really carefully for clues to answer that question. Good luck, historians. London's burning. The summer of 1666 had been very hot. The houses were dry and a single spark from a fire could set a building ablaze. Early in the morning of Sunday the 2nd of September, the Great Fire of London leapt into fire. Tom Fariner, a baker in Pudding Lane, had forgotten to sweep out his oven. It caught fire and burned down his shop. Very soon all of Pudding Lane was alight. The Mayor of London rushed to inspect the fire. A strong wind was driving the fire towards London Bridge. It's nothing, the mayor said, but already the warehouses along Thames Street were under threat and the oil and alcohol stored there would feed the greedy fire. Now you've read that information source, pause the video here and think about reasons why the fire spread so quickly and then come back and we'll go through it together. So using this information source, which reasons did you find that the fire spread so quickly? If you said the summer of 1666 had been very hot and the houses were dry, you would have found one reason why the Great Fire of London spread so quickly. And in this part of the text, if you'd said that a reason the fire spread was because of a strong wind was driving the fire, that would be another reason why it was able to spread across London. And also if you'd put the oil and alcohol stored there would feed the greedy fire, that would give it more fuel, it would keep on burning, then that would be another reason. 
Let's look at another information source now. So how are you going, history detectives? Have you found some clues so far? Here is another source of information. This one is a picture. Now have a really good look at this picture and see if you can find other reasons why the fire spread so quickly. Pause it and then come back in a moment. Okay, so what did you find? Did you say something like the houses are made of wood? And we know that wood is very flammable. We know it catches fire quite easily and actually allows the fire to carry on burning. So that could be one reason that you thought of. Another one, if you looked over here, can you see what the roofs are made from over there? That's right, it's straw. Again, another flammable material. So something that will fuel that fire, that will keep it burning. OK, now for the next one, you need to have a look over here. Look how close these houses are all built next to each other. Now, we already found out in the last piece of information that the there was quite a lot of wind. It was quite a windy time. So these houses being very close together will allow the flames to leap from house to house. OK, so another reason why the fire spread. Also, the streets were really narrow, so narrow, in fact, that actually sometimes the houses were kind of leaning towards each other and people could actually reach outside their window and touch hands of the people in the houses opposite them. So not only could the flames leap from house to house going down the street, they could also leap across the street as well. So lots of reasons there why the fire spread. Don't forget about the dry summer too. So we talked about the wood being flammable. It was so dry, it burnt really easily as well. So all of those are ways in which the fire spread. Now, have a good look at this source of information. Pause the video. Why did the fire spread so quickly? Have a look, detectives, find some clues. Off you go. Now, if you've looked in this video, you will see that at the time, they did not have a designated fire brigade. We have a fire service now with their fire engines that we can call if there was a fire and they would have all the equipment they needed. Back in 1666, they didn't have that. So you can see some people here using ladders and you're right, they're made from wood. So not a great um, material to use for a ladder when you're trying to put out a fire as we know it is flammable. Okay, can you see what these people here are doing? They are using buckets, leather buckets, and they are having to get the water from the Thames and they're passing it along long lines and then they're going to throw that at the fire and try and put it out. Again, only a small amount of water in each bucket. If they weren't near the River Thames, then they would have pumps in the street. So someone would have to go to the pump in the street, pump the water out and then fill the bucket and again pass that along a line. So you weren't getting much water to the fire, such a big raging fire as the fire of London. OK, now over here, have you seen what these people are using over here? These are called water squirters. Now, they were made from metal. OK, they were quite heavy. You'd fill them up with water. Again, they didn't hold too much water. And because they were heavy, it took two people to work them. Although they could put water onto the houses to try and put the fire out, because it didn't have much water inside them, it really couldn't cope with the raging fire that was the Great Fire of London. And have a look at this picture. Pause the video here. Is there anything else in this picture that we haven't seen which people were using to try and put out the fire? Pause the video, have a look, and then come back. Now, if you looked really carefully, you would have noticed here, these people have something. Do you know what that was called? It was called a fire hook, and they used that to pull down parts of the building to try and prevent the fire from burning further. OK, now they could only pull down small amounts at a time. And you can see that there were several people having to operate those as well. Now we've looked at several different information sources to tell us about why the Great Fire of London spread. You're now going to complete an activity to show your understanding of this. We're now going to create a mind map to show our understanding of why the fire spread. So in the middle of a piece of paper, you can write, why did the fire 
spread. And that's a question. So you're going to have a question mark. And I'm just going to put a little cloud around that. And so I'm going to think about all the information sources, what I've learned, and I'm going to pop that on here. OK, so one of the things we talked about was it'd been a hot, dry summer. It had been a hot, dry summer. That's one reason the fire has spread. OK, and another one we said was houses were made from wood and this is a flammable material. OK, now pause the video here and see what else you can add to your mind map to tell us why the fire spread across London. If you'd like some help in creating your mind map, I have put this sheet on the remote learning, which you can print off and fill out. I'll see you again in a minute. So hope you've had enough time to create yourselves a mind map of why the fire spread. Here are a few other things that you could have included. There was a strong wind that made the flames travel from house to house. The roofs of the houses were made of straw, which allowed the fire to keep burning. The houses were built closer together. The streets in London were very narrow. There was not a fire brigade to put the fire out. They had to pass water in leather buckets along lines of people and they only had fire hooks and water squirters to help them put out the fire. So I hope you've enjoyed today's history lesson about why the fire spread so quickly and using those information sources. Great detective work everyone. See you again soon. Bye!